Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have four really easy and incredibly delicious dip recipes to share with you. About a month or so ago, I shared four recipes for pinwheels and I had several of you request more uh, videos like that for party food. So I wanted to do dips next because I absolutely love me some dips. So let's get into these recipes. I'm really excited to share them with you. They are so yummy. First up is a cucumber jalapeno dip. There is a place outside of Nashville in Nolensville, Tennessee. It's called the Nolensville Feed Mill. It's an Amish market. And for the past several summers, towards the end of summer, they have this cucumber jalapeno dip. And it is incredibly delicious. It's not like any other dip I've ever had. And I legit crave this dip. But it's so hard to get because like I said, they only make it for a couple weeks. And when they do have it, it usually sells out pretty quickly. I've been craving it though, and I was like, you know what, I've got to figure out how to make this myself. So I looked on their Facebook page, which I'll have linked down below, and I saw a couple of their posts where they said what was in it. Now, of course, I don't know the exact measurements. They just provided the ingredients, but this was a little bit of an experiment um, because I was just kind of winging it. I couldn't find a, an exact recipe online for it, but this was so easy, and this was like really spot on to their dip. So let me show you how I did this. And I forgot to mention, in addition to me checking out their Facebook page, I had included the cucumber dip in a haul, um, I think like last year. And I went back and reviewed that footage and looked at the ingredients that they have listed on the label. And it was the same four ingredients. So the ingredients they have listed are cucumber, sour cream, jalapeno, and heavy whipping cream. And then I also decided to add in some salt. So I've got my food processor and in this bowl, I have my cucumber. I peeled it and seeded it and cut it into large chunks. I also took about a third of that jalapeno that I showed and I removed the seeds and the membranes. I'm gonna place this into the food processor and pulse it until it's, um, I, you don't want it to be completely liquidy, but you don't want huge chunks in there, but you do want it to be a little bit chunky. I hope that makes sense. So while I'm doing that, a couple quick notes. Um, one, this dip is a little bit on the thinner side. It's not a super thick dip, um, but if you keep in mind that, you know, it's cucumber that's got a little bit of water in it. And then secondly, I considered grating the cucumber for this, um, but when I thought about it, I changed my mind um, because when I've talked to the Amish mill about the cucumber dip, they've mentioned that they use leftover cucumber or cucumbers, um, that like, you know, they kind of start to go bad or have some yucky spots on them. They'll cut that off. And so I, and then based on the texture of the dip, I just decided to do the food processor. And like I said, it was pretty spot on. So once I've pulsed that, I'm going to add in half of the container of sour cream. Um, like I said, I'm just winging it. I don't know that that's really necessary. I just decided to try it. Um, once I've added the half of the sour cream, I'm going to pulse it a few more times and then move on. I'm going to transfer that to a bowl. Now, I wasn't sure about the texture. I was worried it was too chunky. So I first ran it through a fine mesh strainer. But as I did that, I noticed that I was pretty happy with the texture. So I just poured everything into the bowl. So if you make this, you don't have to strain it. Um, I will have the recipe typed out in the description box below, kind of my end result minus all my experimentations. <laughs> I'll have that typed out below if you'd like to give this a try. I'm gonna add in the rest of the sour cream as well as the heavy whipping cream. You don't need a lot of the cream at all, just a couple tablespoons. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well and then season that to taste with salt and that's it. You could eat this right away, but I really would suggest that you put this into the refrigerator and let it chill for a couple hours just to let the flavors come together. Now, as you saw, there's only a couple of ingredients in this. This isn't a really strongly flavored dip. It's very light, very refreshing. Like I said, it is a little bit thinner than normal dips, but it is yummy. Now, the feed mill suggested that we eat this dip with uh, like the wavy veggie chips. So that's what I've got here. That's what I'm going to serve it with. And here is the finished chips with the dip. Again, this is just yummy. It's simple. If you like cucumbers, I suggest that you give this a try, especially if you like grow your own cucumbers and you've got a lot, don't know what to do with it, make this dip. And we've also in the past had this on um, like leftover gyros with chicken and rice. So yummy. Next, I'm making what I call my ranch chip dip. Um, this isn't a completely 
unique recipe to me. I basically took existing recipes that I've seen for a loaded baked potato dip and I made just a little change to it uh, to kind of make it my own. And do that, you know, with recipes, make it your own and use what you like. And that's how I came up with this. And we love this. I've made this so many times over the years. I've taken it to work potlucks, church potlucks. I've served it at get togethers. It's just yummy and it's really easy. It is a crowd pleaser. Let me show you what I'm going to use to make it. All right, I've got some sour cream, some crumbled bacon. You can, of course, cook up your own bacon and crumble it. I'm just using this crumbled bacon from Sam's Club. You'll need some shredded cheddar cheese, some green onions that we're going to chop up, and then for my little twist. So years and years ago when I first made this, I had a packet of this ranch dips, the Fiesta kind on hand, and I wanted to use it up. So I decided to add that to this dip um, and it was really good, but these little dips are pretty salty. So what I've kind of tweaked over the years is, is I use a half a packet of the Fiesta dip mix and then I um, basically use a half a packet's worth of just dry ranch Hidden Valley um, dressing mix. Um, you could use the whole Fiesta packet if you prefer, just for my personal taste, it's a little bit salty, but you do you. If you want to use the whole packet of Fiesta, dip you go for it all right let me show you how to put this together real quick so in my bowl i'm going to add in my sour cream i just add this 16 ounce sour cream for like i said uh, get togethers and stuff like that at our house if you're making this for a big pot like you can easily double or triple this recipe Next, I'm going to add in the Fiesta mix as well as the dry ranch dressing mix. And if you don't have the Fiesta mix on hand or if you can't find it, you could just use all dry ranch dressing mix and add in a little bit of taco seasoning and it tastes pretty much the same as the little Fiesta um, seasoning packet. Next, I'm going to add in the cheese and bacon and scallions. And to be honest with you, I've made this so many times that I just eyeball it. I use how much ever cheese and bacon and green onions I feel like using that day. But I'll have the exact measurements typed out down below if you would prefer to have exact measurements. So once I add that, I'm going to stir it until it's combined really well, and then that's it. Like with the cucumber jalapeno dip, you of course can serve this right away. I suggest putting it into the refrigerator for a couple hours before you serve it, just to let the flavors come together. To serve this up, I like to use the wavy potato chips. Um, you could use corn chips, crackers, whatever you like. And then um, before I serve it though, I do like to add just a little bit of cheese and bacon on top as a little garnish. You don't have to do that. This is so incredibly delicious. And a quick note, you can use um, Greek yogurt. If you don't have sour cream or prefer to use Greek yogurt, you can totally use the Greek yogurt. I've done that before and it is delicious. Next, I tried a new recipe for a pepper jelly cheese dip. My granny used to make um, pepper jelly. Well, I guess not make, more like serve. It's just two ingredients. <laughs> but she used to set out pepper jelly and cream cheese like at Christmas, and we would eat it on Ritz crackers. So yummy. For whatever reason, we normally only have that at Christmas, but it's so delicious. And when I saw this recipe on Pinterest, I was like, I have got to give this a try because we really love that combination. So let me show you how to make this. Just a few ingredients. It's really easy, and it is tasty. I'll have the recipe linked in my description box below. A quick note, I did have the recipe. So first you'll need some pepper jelly. This is peach pepper jelly that we got in Georgia a couple months ago, but just use whatever pepper jelly you like. We've got some softened cream cheese, some Ritz crackers that we're gonna crush up, some chopped scallions or green onions, and then some cooked and crumbled bacon. And then you'll need some shredded cheese. The recipe called for shredded cheddar cheese, but I had some Monterey Jack cheese on hand that I wanted to use up. So that's what I'm going to use. I've got the oven preheating to 350 degrees. In this bowl, I have the softened cream cheese. I'm going to add to that the cheddar cheese, or in my case, the Monterey Jack cheese, and the green onions and stir it until it's really well combined. Now, a quick tip, if your cream cheese isn't as soft as what you would like, or if you forget to set it out, just place it in a bowl, take it out of the like foil paper, of course, put it in a bowl and then pop it in the microwave on defrost for maybe 10, 15 seconds tops and it'll soften right up for you. So once I've got that mixture combined really well, I'm going to take a baking dish, spray it with some cooking spray. I'm going to spread that cream cheese mixture out on the bottom of the dish. Then I'm going to sprinkle on the crushed Ritz crackers, then the cooked and crumbled bacon, 
and that's it. This is going to go into the preheated oven and it's gonna bake for 15 minutes. In this bowl here, I have the pepper jelly. So once the dip is done baking, I'm going to remove it from the oven. I'm gonna pop this bowl into the microwave and cook it for about 30 seconds. Give it a stir and then immediately pour it over the dip, uh, again, that has come out of the oven. And I just kind of spread the pepper jelly out with the back of my spoon. So this is the finished dip. I served it with some rich crackers like the recipe suggested. I also had some club crack crackers, if I could talk, on hand. And this was delicious. We really enjoyed this and I will absolutely make this again. For the final recipe, we're going to end it with something sweet. I tried a fluffernutter dip. Now my husband loves fluffernutter, so I thought he would really like this and he did. If you're not familiar with a fluffernutter, it is a funny name, <laughs> yes, and a bit of a tongue twister, by the way. Um, but it's basically like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, except instead of jelly, you use marshmallow fluff. So you have the marshmallow fluff, the fluffer, and then the peanut butter, the nutter part. So for this dip, it's really easy. Three ingredients, that's it. So you need the peanut butter, the marshmallow fluff, and some softened cream cheese. The recipe does say that you can use crunchy or chunky peanut butter if you would prefer. And I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below. I did half the recipe, by the way, for this. So to make this so, so easy, all we do is just combine the three ingredients. You can, of course, do this in a stand mixer if you prefer, but I just mix it together by hand. Once it's really well combined, that's it. It's ready to serve. I decided to serve it up with some fresh strawberries, some of these little mini chessman cookies, and some pretzel crisps. You could use um, pretzels, you could use crackers, um, all kinds of different things. We, I, I thought about doing bananas. Unfortunately, I didn't have any bananas. And I also thought apples would be really, really delicious with this. But so easy, super yummy. I really think your family would like this. Um, so I encourage you to give this and the other dips from today's video a try. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this gave you some inspiration. And like I said, I hope you give one or some of these recipes a try and that you enjoy it. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.